Today I wanted to uh, look at three, or three, uh, look at a, a range of themes uh, around the uh, issues of infrastructure and agriculture. Uh, what I want to do is uh, outline why Infrastructure Australia is looking at roads, uh, what Infrastructure Australia has done, is doing and is likely to do in the future, and how this relates to agriculture. Uh, and just to uh, avoid any confusion, uh, uh, and not specifically for Russell's uh, benefit, but uh, this is not about uh, a new way to access government funding. Uh, what I'd like, uh, and it, not having met any of the other speakers before this afternoon, uh, my presentation will pick up on uh, a number of themes that uh, have already been raised. Um, first, uh, the need for better data uh, to ensure investment is efficient. Uh, the need for more efficient logistics chains if agricultural exports are to increase. Uh, user pays as a funding stream but along with user pays, user says. So users need to have a say in the infrastructure that gets provided, as opposed to, particularly with roads, the situation now where that is largely absent. And uh, as, uh, as Russell pointed out, we need a better modal shift uh, between road and rail. Uh, so just to talk about the basis for our, our thinking, uh, like other infrastructure, roads are only as good as what they're used for. Uh, the standard and condition of a road should be adequate for its highest and best use. Uh, for freight, particularly for agricultural products, uh, the main purpose of roads is to get the product to market at the lowest cost. Uh, in terms of roads, cost is a combination of operating the truck this is particularly for roads, and the cost of the road. Uh, from our point of view, spending on a road would be a good investment for agriculture if this combined cost falls. And there's an implication there. Uh, however, this is not the way in which road spending occurs today. There's no real consideration of whether road spending is a good investment in any industry. And to a large extent, uh, that is because of the lack of data. So people just don't know whether the spending is going to be effective or not. Now, we like to change this situation. Uh, however, some care is needed, and this is about the externalities, uh, particularly for freight movements. Uh, most communities are sensitive to increasing freight movements in and around where people are. So this is something which, which needs to be taken to, into account when thinking about improvements and greater access for heavier trucks. So why do we want to think about roads? Uh, there's a widespread, long-held and now increasing concern about the condition of local roads in rural areas. Uh, just before this session, uh, Darrell uh, a point to me that uh, not much has changed since he began working on road policy 30 years ago. And I think that's some, you know, this is not going to move ahead unless we get a break in the, in the current paradigm. Uh, now, trucks have a big impact on the condition of roads. The trucks face federal and state charges, excise and registration, which are meant to cover the cost of the damage to the roads. Uh, however, there is a break between how roads are used and how roads are funded. Uh, governments, particularly Commonwealth and state governments, are entirely in charge of the road spending from revenue that's gained from those charges. And decisions are often based on criteria other than commercial return, or the actual use of roads. So the spending priorities may not match at all the priorities of producers or those that pay the charges for using the road. So in the last 30 years, the number and the size of trucks has increased greatly 
adding to road wear and maintenance needs, but they also offer more efficient freight movements and arguably safer freight movements. Partly, uh, I think Russell touched on this as well, uh, the increasing use of trucks is due to less agricultural use of rail, uh, in particular branch lines. So again, rail and grain storage have increasingly been seen as a strictly commercial activity. Uh, and if they're not commercial, then they tend to be closed down. Uh, that's not the approach that's taken to roads. Uh, it's also, uh, a, there's also a view that one effect of the use, the less use of rail uh, and greater use of, of roads uh, is a shift of the burden of maintenance costs from the states uh, or the Commonwealth who own the rail to local government who own most of the local rural roads. Uh, and with the shift of that cost, uh, there has not been a commensurate shift in in revenue. So what, what can be done? Because this situation doesn't look like it will change uh, anytime soon. So there are uh, a number of questions we posed on, on how we might change the situation. Uh, and what we, looked, what we came up with was how can we design a mechanism for private investment into roads, where investments are identified by industry and road users rather than just by government. Uh, with rights for industry to identify investment, and as I said before, with the user pays comes users having a say, just like for railways or other important infrastructure. How we, we thought, how are we going to progress this, this concept? So we struck upon the idea uh, of rather than trying to overturn the whole uh, road funding arrangements and road planning arrangements, that we would strike out on initially three pilot projects to demonstrate how a greater, uh, how a greater say, particularly uh, for users, could lead to uh, a real increase in efficiency and a real increase in national income. Uh, so we've decided to test the potential for private investment into some roads, including local rural roads, with the idea that, at the very least, this might cut through some of the current confusion. So we decided this was, this, the pilots that we've promoted uh, was warranted, because in our view, uh, None of the previous trials that have been done have been done very well and they haven't been documented. So we struck upon three pilot projects. Uh, Chalora is uh, Sydney's main rail, uh, particularly container, uh, intermodal terminal. Uh, at the moment, uh, or at least a couple of months ago, uh, the Bankstown Council is the, local, is the local council which owns the roads that lead from, for example, the Hume Highway and other major roads uh, into the rail terminal. Uh, it has full responsibility for upkeep of those roads. They're not on the national freight network, so there's no, there's no state government contribution, there's no national government contribution. Uh, so Bankstown Council said, well, why would our ratepayers upgrade these roads uh, when the beneficiaries are uh, the truckers and the large companies and, and operators there. So what we've did, like a, as a result, the roads leading into the uh, terminal uh, have se severe weight restrictions on them, mean that quite often uh, not even a fully loaded container can actually get into the terminal. So we've got a you know, uh, very inefficient process. Uh, there's also a, a surrounding industrial area with a lot of warehousing, uh, which also have weight restrictions on them. The second trial uh, was on the Hume Highway, uh, so the introduction of uh, high productivity vehicles between uh, Melbourne and Sydney. Uh, uh, the road 
now, uh, now complete uh, in terms of its duplication, uh, has the capacity to uh, safely uh, carry uh, very high mass limit trucks, uh, be triples potentially. Uh, but there's been a resistance from both the New South Wales and Victorian governments into expanding trials that have been going on for some years in the use of these trucks uh, to that highway. So we've pushed ahead to try and uh, break open that, uh, that route. And the third pilot, which is really what I want to talk about today, which is where the agriculture comes into it, uh, is Bingra. So uh, northwest uh, New South Wales and also in, into Queensland. Uh, so the idea where we could improve uh, freight efficiency for, on the roads that are used for grain, for cotton and also uh, for livestock transport. Uh, so the origins of the Bingra um, project uh, were in the Australian Rural Roads Group, a uh, collection of many uh, rural councils. Uh, uh, the head of uh, the Australian Rural, rural Road Group, uh, John Coulton, uh, came to Infrastructure Australia. Uh, uh, he said that uh, we need to do something uh, to improve the efficiency of, of uh, road freight for agricultural producers. Uh, we said that we thought it might be possible to set up a scheme for private investment uh, to help out in this area because there wasn't a flow of state or federal money uh, coming in to assist in local roads. Uh, our idea was that investment uh, would be administered by a portfolio manager with access to various sources of funds uh, the manager might finance improvements to the roads that would still be owned by councils. The payoff would be uh, better truck access, so larger trucks and less disruptions, for example, uh, for flooding and other weather events. Uh, and we said that for investment, for private investment into roads, uh, four conditions uh, would need to be satisfied. So we need to know the present condition of the road. So we needed, we needed some data. Uh, uh, and we need to know, you know what level of access that, that condition would provide. And so therefore, part of the project was to do an assessment of road condition in this area around Bingra. Uh, the second condition was the cost of improving the road had to be less than the benefits that would flow in terms of improve freight access and efficient, more efficient freight access. So if we're going to spend uh, $100,000 fixing up the road, we would be looking for a significantly higher payoff in terms of the reduction in haulage costs. The third condition was that local government need to be happy for greater truck access, so bigger trucks uh, once the road condition was improved. So will the community accept the amenity impacts that might be there. And it was a signal to perhaps we should look at areas where there's not going to be significant community amenity impacts. And the fourth condition was the parties, so the farmers, the truckies, and the potential road portfolio manager are willing to deal so they can come together to make it happen. So then we said, well, OK, uh, there's three questions uh, if there's going to be, if this concept is going to get off the ground. First one was, is it possible to assess road condition? Uh, because we've been told in the past uh, uh, that this was just too hard, that local governments couldn't really do this, there was too many of them, there wasn't a, a real uh, basis or format for them to do this, uh, and therefore lack of data means nobody's confident about uh, where the investment uh, goes or whether the investment's uh, efficient. Uh, and then the second question was, can an assessment of road conditions and what potential uh, inform investment? So there, can this, is this sufficient for people to get a view, good view about whether this investment is going to pay off? And the third question was, can we do a deal? And that's not always, uh, uh, there's not always an obvious answer to that. So we 
we think we've demonstrated that uh, the first question can be answered uh, in the positive. So we have uh, the councils in that area have produced this report, which documents the road condition of uh, a huge number of roads and, and length of roads. Uh, it's to uh, international standards. Uh, it provides a sound basis for in potential investors to look at this to see whether or not there might be uh, a return to be made. Uh, th that, these, that these eight local government areas in the northwest of New South Wales and, and Queensland could come up with something like this means that this could be done across Australia. This is, it's not rocket science, it's not, not that difficult. This was done without any funding, it was done uh, voluntarily, drawing on uh, council members, on the road maintainers in the council uh, and with, with some standard uh, templates in order to record use. So uh, the first question can be answered in the affirmative. Uh, and the rep this report's on our website, the National Road Asset Reporting Pilot. Uh, we've also demonstrated that the second question uh, can be answered. Now, not every road improvement is financially viable or financially worthwhile, uh, but some are. We're now in the process of demonstrating or finding an answer to the third question. Uh, this is uh, more difficult. This is where we move from the desktop, uh, our natural workplace, uh, to the farms and to the trucking operators, uh, the real world. So there are, what we hope we can identify is we know there is a gap. We think the gap can be filled at a significant, uh, we will be looking particularly where the gap can be filled with a significant advantage to all, all party, parties. So, and to be quite honest, the first two stages, so that getting the answers to those first two questions uh, have been more successful than we could have hoped. Uh, it is possible to establish a portfolio of opportunities for spending on roads that clearly increases national income, that doesn't just subsidise agriculture. And it's possible to rank those opportunities in terms of contribution to the local and wider Australian economy. Uh, this has done, been done in northern New South Wales with considerable ease. It's achievable for the rest of Australia. Uh, the sources of road funding no longer have to be just government or taxes or charges. It's conceivable that private, local and international capital markets can be tapped without the sale uh, of the council road assets, so the still remaining council hands. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the, the leadership of the Australian Rural Roads Group, uh, uh, particularly, and particularly the Gwaita, Moree and Narrabri Shires, and uh, also my colleagues at Infrastructure Australia, particularly John Austin and Michael Deegan, who have been really the, uh, the drivers uh, to get to where we are at the moment. Uh, we've now got the Bingra Accord between the Australian Ro Rural Roads Group and Infrastructure Australia that es establishes principles for how we might reform the situation for the provision of rural roads. Uh, a national regime, uh, uh, we could have state add-ons and we could come up with a solution to the last mile problem that so many people find intractable. Uh, we can identify rules of thumb that are well understood by most uh, but get lost in the noise of transport policy. As Russell alluded to, the idea that roads should run to a railhead not parallel to a main rail line. But if we want to get better mode share, that's what we should be focusing on. Uh, the third stage of, of our Bingra pilot will be completed at the end of this month. Uh, what we're looking to achieve is uh, deeds of access, uh, much like uh, uh, players in the mining communities might have in relation to their use uh, of, of local roads. Uh, we'd like to think that this holds significant potential uh, for changing the rules of the game in provision of uh, roads that people actually need. Thank you very much.